Welcome back to Gnarly Speed Shop. Today we have to get our big block idling. So if you saw our last video, you would have seen us struggling with a couple of our carburetors. Um, they're just not the ideal carburetor for that kind of an engine. It's a 512 big block with a big cam and it just didn't want to idle. So we really needed idling in order to check the timing and more importantly, check for leaks because if there's any leaks, we got to get it off the stand back in the engine room and fix it before we put it in the car. So to solve our issues, we got a new carburetor right here from FST Carb. And how this came to be is uh, Ken from FST actually reached out to me through email through our like merch site, you can email us and I check them every day. Um, he reached out and he's like, I got a carb for your big block. And this is hands down the nicest carburetor I've ever owned. Like, <laughs> it's amazing. So FST makes like a machined, CNC machine main body, metering blocks, bowls, like just like nice stuff and really light too. It's very light compared to my other carburetors. But um, this one in particular is a 950 CFM unit. But why we really like it is because it's really adjustable and tunable. So unlike the carb we were using before, you know, um, one thing with having a big cam and getting it to idle is, I don't know if you guys can see, there's these Turn little holes in the throttle blades. Yeah, those holes right there to bypass air to get it to like idle down. Yeah, if you have a big cam, lots of overlap. Yeah, but you have to keep taking it off the engine, drilling it out a little bit bigger each time until you get it perfect. Because if you go too big, then you got to get a whole new butterfly valve or, or um, weld it up and then drill it out again. Yeah. And if it's not even the right size carb, like this one wasn't for us in the first place, then what's the point of even going through all that trouble? Yeah. So it's just And then a we had a crack, that cracked bowl. Yeah, cracked bowl. There was, yeah. <laughs> there was some issues, basically. So... Ken says this is going to solve it for us, that we can literally just throw this thing on and it's optimized for our engine. Um, him and I went back and forth on like the cam specs, what RPM we plan on running it to, things like that. And uh, they yeah. They wet flowed it too. Yeah, they put it on their wet flow bench. So hopefully in the future we can visit FST Carb and show you guys like the facility. But um, yeah, this is like a killer piece right here. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this piece of jewelry right here on our big block and then fingers crossed, I'm sure it will, but we're gonna see if it idles now and then we can, like I said, check timing and check for leaks. Okay. What a thing of beauty. Do you have the little... Uh, they're on the toolbox. <laughs> It looks so good on the engine, and unfortunately, we still have to use this crummy fuel line. Let's fill up that bowl a little bit. Is that the right hole? Good enough to get us some. There we go. Okay. Finally, it's a nice day outside. This is the first time we've run our big block when it hasn't been raining. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Yeah, it's like so nice. So now we're gonna hook up the water. So we have a constant flow of water going through the block. And then Danny's just hooking up the fuel the lines. The world's fanciest fuel lines yeah. a carburetor has ever seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really funny having this like billet <laughs> carburetor and then these like, what was that from? Uh, just some spare parts we found at the junkyard. <laughs> um, but we do have a really nice one, but I'm waiting for a fitting to come in for that, an yeah. adapter. Yeah. But this will get us by for now. Okay, so that's tight. That's tight. 
that's on there where it was before, so we know that's good. Yep. We put fuel in there. We got to turn on the water so it fills up the block mm -hmm. and it'll just drain out here on its own. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll turn it on slow, the water, until we watch the temperature rise on here until it hits like around like, you know, 160 or so. And then we'll start to open the water a little bit more and control the temperature with the water speed. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because there's no thermostat in there right now. No. It's just flowing through. <laughs> so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Yeah. It'll be fun. Okay. Now. We should call the neighbors to tell them it's gonna get really loud. I know. All right, so I guess, I'm hoping that there's no leaks. Last time we didn't get enough heat in the motor to get the oil thin enough to really test it, so. Fingers crossed. And let's see if this thing lights off. Ready? Yep. I feel like, it, okay, is it in park? <laughs>
Okay, we got some unfortunate things going on here. Oh no! Oh, it's bad, it's bad, it's still bad. Oh my gosh. Oh shoot. That is not good. It's like pouring out of there. That sucks. Man. That is not good. <laughs> we spent so much time trying to get that rear main seal like perfect. And we spent the extra money to Get the, get the good seal and then now we have this wow what a bummer that sucks. it's like really that's gonna be so much work just to get this thing back in the engine room that's gonna be a lot well guys A lot of stuff has to come apart now, unfortunately. Like, this isn't just, dang it. I don't understand how that could leak, you know. We, we, we put it together so perfectly. We read the instructions and we did it exactly how Fast Fish said to do it. I think I even said that in the other video. I'm like, if this leaks, then I don't even know like what it could be because we did it like so carefully. Well, here we are. Uh, really unfortunate, but at least this happened on the engine stand, right? Not in the car. That was, yeah, the whole point of the engine stand. So. Yeah, so I guess there is some positive things from this. But, you know, there still is a chance it could be like the cam plug, the, plug, the freeze plug thing that goes in the cam area there. Oh. Highly unlikely with that much oil coming out of it. There's a couple plugs back there, which I know I sealed up. Um, but basically we'll take off the, um, the bell housing yeah. and the clutch, and then we'll really be able to see what's leaking back there. Yeah. Cause there's also like where the cap goes on, there's two seals that go on on the side. I mean, maybe it's like something right there, but we're going to find it out and we're going to fix it. We have to fix it. Yeah. But it sounds dang healthy i know i'm stoked that it's idling now that cam is so killer and like once this thing has a muffler on it you'll really be able to like hear it yeah yeah ideally i'd like to have a muffler on it while we're running it to listen for the valve train yeah but we don't have a three inch muffler or any sort of muffler system right now um so luckily i have those little earpiece the little yeah. doctor's thing and i could hear the valve train everything sounds pretty good there's this one here in the front. I felt like it was a little bit louder than the rest of them, but not, not by much. Um, once we have the engine in the engine room, we'll take off the valve cover and we'll recheck the lash. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we should be fine. So close. Almost made it. So close. All right, so we had a moment to chill out here for a little bit and really figure out what we're gonna do next. And the only thing to do is to fix the leak, right? I mean, we can't just leave it like that. So we gotta take off that flywheel show you guys exactly where it's coming from and if we made a mistake we're going to show you that as well mm -hmm. but um we have another engine that actually needs to go on this run stand it's a pontiac 400 cubic inch engine that is for the firebird that we have in the back of the shop it's a customer's car but we're going to show you us running it on the engine stand in another video so in a weird way it's kind of good that we have to take this off of there right now because we have another motor that needs to go on there Nothing left to do other than uh, get to pulling this thing, but uh, you want to show them the 400 first? Yeah, let's show them the 400. Okay, real quickly, here's the Pontiac motor. It's a 400 cubic inch Pontiac with some goodies on the inside. We'll explain later at the end of the video, but for right now, we'll leave that there. And we got to get this off of the engine stand. Out the oil. Let's see, 
seven is gonna barely hold seven. Anything in there? Oh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks real good. Okay, first time draining the oil, we got this magnet. We'll just do a little magnet test here. I mean, we really haven't ran the engine for very long, but just in case there's anything serious going on in here, right? Mm -hmm. Like more serious than a rear main seal leak. Anything? I don't see. I don't see nothing. Yeah, I don't see anything. Yay! Yay! What is leaking? Um, the water is leaking oh. in the front. Oh yeah, it's definitely coming from right here. So this is what we get. We're using the best parts money could buy and taking our sweet time to make sure everything was like super clean and following all the directions to a T. This is what we get. Okay, just like that, we are back in the engine room. Um, we're gonna find out what we did wrong. Maybe we can fix it by just fishing the seal in like that, or we might have to pull the whole bottom end out of this thing, take the whole engine apart again, just to fix the seal. So what do you guys think? We need to take it all the way apart or do we, can we just fish it in there? I don't know, but we're gonna look into it. We don't have time though right now because we gotta get outside to pull that engine out of my work truck. The yep. Pontiac motor is in my work truck and I have to go to work on Monday. So mm -hmm. we gotta get it out. Here Ooh. it is. We just picked this up from the engine shop, West Coast Engines. Thank you so much for handling this. We've had our hands full here building our own engine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hopefully this one doesn't leak. So we're gonna put this on the engine stand and run it just to verify that everything's good. And then we're gonna put it in the car that's sitting right there in the back. We'll show you that in a second. Mm -hmm. Let's get this up. So we need the lift plate off of the yeah, we're going to get the lift plate on okay. here. Okay, are we going to grab that tire? Yeah, we'll bring it out with the tire. Because we'll set it on the tire inside. Okay. Set it over there. All right, let's yank the thing. All right, let's see what we got. goodness so good. just in case you guys didn't know this engine is for this car right here this is a 1969 firebird and we've been working on this car for quite a while now and we got all the suspension done underneath front and rear it's all everything's brand new underneath and we got a interior full of boxes to actually do the interior um, and then the transmission sitting over here. Engine just got back from the machine shop. And we're gonna put it in there. Um, but before we put it in there, we're gonna put it on the engine stand. Make sure there's no leaks. Dang, what a beauty. I love the Pontiac blue color. Like I'll say that for the blocks. I think it's the prettiest factory engine color. I, I, I uh, definitely agree with you. Man, that's so good looking. Yeah. That's so cool. That's really nice. Yeah. So we got a water pump on order for it. Um, and Joe went ahead and actually installed a performer intake manifold on there for us, an aluminum one, because the factory one was had a little crack in it. So we're going to put this on the engine stand in the next week or two, run it. But for now, we're gonna set it over here off to the side on the tire and just let it sit there. Quick reminder, we're still running a deal on our gnarly speed shop hats. If you order one of them, you'll be getting one of our uh, surfboard bottle opener keychains in your order. As always, we appreciate your support. 
That's gonna do it for today's video. We got the Pontiac safe here in the shop and uh, that pig, we're gonna be diagnosing it and seeing exactly what happened. But uh, when we find out, you guys will be the first to know.